here today with another ski review. And today we are talking about the Hagan Core 89. And uh, we'll talk about what this ski is and why we have it in our quiver. And I say we because both Danny and I uh, purchased this exact same ski in the exact same length to use for the exact same purpose. First, quick specs. This is a 170 centimeter ski. Like it says, 89 uh, millimeter waist. I think it's 125, 89, and 108 millimeter dimension for a, I think, 18 and a half meter side cut. So not super turny, but also not straight. And it makes this a very, uh, I would almost say easy skiing ski, but I'm just gonna say a very skiable ski. Weight on this ski. They say for the 176 length, the next length up, 1290 grams. I measured mine at like 1280 grams, I think each, 1280 and 1290. So they came in substantially heavier than they were supposed to, I guess. And I've had that happen with another pair of Hagan skis. I had their one of their free ride models and each ski came in about 100 grams above their listed weights. I don't know if I'm just unlucky or if that's a trend. It is kind of annoying when that happens with uh, ski manufacturers. I've never had a ski come in under the advertised weight. To all you ski manufacturers, that's just uh, that's just a data point and do it with it at what you will. So why did we buy this ski? This was to be our volcano ski this year. For its width and dimensions, it's like a half a notch heavier than what we would normally have in our quiver, just the types of skiers we, we are. If we had a 90 millimeter waisted ski, usually we're looking for something around that 1100 gram mark, maybe 1150. Um, this was closer to 1300, like 1250, 1290. And, but that was with purpose because we both have had horrendous experiences on volcano um, faces with the most boilerplate, death cookie, uh, sastrugi, strewn um, snow, ice, and hated the skis that we were skiing on because they were so light and so stiff and so uh, just chattery and you know rattling our fillings out of our mouth practically. So we thought, you know what, it might be a good idea to, to look for a ski that just handles variable conditions a little better than simply the lightest uh, ski we could find um, on the market. So the Hagan Core 89, I have skied this now on one regular touring day and two uh, 19,000 foot plus volcanoes in South America. We were down in Ecuador and I skinned to the top of Antisana on these skis and I climbed to the top of Chimborazo with these skis on my pack. Did they perform in a short answer? Yes, they were essentially everything I was looking for in a volcano ski. Uh, they are damp, noticeably more damp than other ultralight uh, carbon-based um, touring skis. It's a ski that I did not have to think about skiing. It, it turns easily, whether that's quick, short turns, or bigger radius turns. If I need to maneuver it around quickly, it does fine. But it's, it's a ski that when you're at 20,000 feet and your cognitive abilities are already compromised, the last thing I want is to be on a ski that I have to think, oh, I need to stay forward on this ski, or, oh, this, that's right, this has a, a stiff tail, so I need to ski this way or that way. I want a ski that I can put on and just ski without thinking about, and it will handle those variable conditions. And we had variable conditions. We had everything from uh, smooth, buttery kind of corn snow to really not, not boilerplate, but the, about the firmest snow you know, level right below boilerplate. And these did great. They did uh, everything that I asked them to do. I would not call this a high performance ski in that you are not going to be slaying Alaska spines at Mach 5 on this ski, nor would I really choose this as my number one ski if I was standing at the top of a super steep 
uh, super, you know, icy coolar or something. I think I'd want something just a little, maybe stiffer, not as easy skiing, but something that is really going to uh, perform when I when I get on it and put it on edge and I, I can rely on. But for a like everyday ski, this is one of the best, I'd say just all around, when we hear that term all over resort skis or touring skis of all, an all mountain ski, this would be a perfect example. All mountain, many different conditions, even powder. I mean, 125 uh, millimeter shovel, that, that's a nice shovel. I mean, and we've skied, both Danny and I have skied powder in these and they're fun. They're, uh, they're enjoyable. So who would I recommend these skis for? One idea that came to mind is maybe somebody who got into ski touring with their heavy, almost resort gear, like we all do when we start, and is thinking, you know what, I'd like something lighter, but maybe they're not a high level skier, so they need something that's not going to require, you know, a high level of skill to manipulate, this would be a ski that is light enough. It is light enough that it feels noticeably different than maybe a, a, a free ride ski or a um, resort, you know, side country ski. So that would be one application. The other would be if you're looking for kind of like we were a specific niche ski where you wanted something that, you know, maybe you are a high level skier, but you want it for a specific purpose. And for us, that was like we said, to ski volcano type scenarios where you're just, you don't know what you're gonna find. The, the conditions uh, can vary so much from top to bottom and, and you really never know for sure what it's going to be like. This is a ski that I could take with me and just not worry about. For this setup, for our volcano setup, Danny chose to put the Alpinist 12, the marker Alpinist 12, and I, uh, mounted the ATK Coolar 12. Both of us were looking for something just, you know, again, one notch above the ultralight, give us a little uh, more, I'd say, durability, just in the worst case scenario, and skiability. You know, this Alpinist is known for being just, you know, a little damper than some of the uh, harsher Schemo bindings. I would show you mine, but I actually left them in South America. I didn't lose them, but I sold them for the steal of a deal of the century to our guide, Andres, uh, because it is super hard for those guys to get any kind of ski equipment in South America. So I kind of played it off as my tip, I guess, <laughs> to him by hooking it up with a full setup. I left my skis, bindings, boots, skins, and he was the happiest uh, ski guide in Ecuador when I left. Hagan Core 89, a great uh, all mountain ski.